I guess I gotta say it, I thought this movie was king, so all hail to it. The King is the new film by Australian writer-director David Michaud, best known for 2010's Animal Kingdom, a movie that I only just saw recently but absolutely loved. It's so good. This film stars Timothy Chalamet, Joel Edgerton, who co-wrote the script with Michaud, uh, Sean Harris, Robert Pattinson, Ben Mendelsohn, Lily Rose Depp, and it's basically a reimagining of Shakespeare's King Henry plays. The story follows young Henry V, played by Chalamet, as he ascends to the throne and navigates the politics that kind of come with it. Now, my expectations for this film were kind of weird because I do have an interest in the director and obviously an intense interest in the cast. Call me by your name, stands. where you at? And it does have a team behind it that I am incredibly interested in. My favorite cinematographer of all time, Adam Arkapoor, who's best known for True Detective season one and Macbeth, Mwah, most beautiful looking movie I've ever seen. And of course it has Nicholas Brattel on the score, best known for for Moonlight. So technically speaking, it's got all the elements there, but coming out of the early festival circuit, the praise for this movie was mild at best. And I'm happy to report back that I loved this movie, absolutely loved it. Now, obviously I have a thing for movies like this, these patient, methodical, medieval movies that break down this single central character as they kind of navigate what it is to be king. Macbeth from 2015, also by an Australian director, is one of my favourite movies of all time, and I do have an intense interest in Shakespeare. I'll put in something now to say that don't worry, this film is not all in Shakespearean English. It is a very different adaption where the language is totally, I guess, normal as such, it's still like old English, but it is not Shakespearean. That's probably something that's worth noting because it's what I expected, isn't how it went though. But this is a movie that I think a lot of people are gonna go, ah, it's boring and slow. And like, yeah, okay, I guess it is. But for me, there's so many little beautiful details and, and things to dissect and explore. And that's why I love this movie so much. This is of course a Netflix release, but I was lucky enough to see it up on the big screen in a cinema. And I cannot imagine watching it at home because part of the joy of this movie is studying the characters' faces, really absorbing all of those minute intricacies in the performances because the performances here across the board are absolutely glorious. Timothy Chalamet does fantastic work here. We know that he does these internal kind of reserved performances really well, but this one really allows him to kind of blow up and go a little bit more kind of uh, crazy than I think we've seen him do before. It's still very much in his realm, but I thought he absolutely aced it. You know who doesn't play in their normal realm and absolutely stole the show for me? Joel Edgerton. This is my favorite Joel Edgerton performance by a mile. From the second he popped up on screen, I hadn't seen any trailers, so I didn't know which character he'd be playing, but the second he rocked up on screen, it took me by surprise. He went all in on this role and he plays a very quiet, reserved character that is a man of few words, but when he does speak, it's incredibly poignant and he was absolutely crazily good in this movie. Sean Harris does the Sean Harris thing like no one else can. He absolutely powers through this movie and he is a force to be reckoned with, as is Ben Mendelsohn, playing in territory that I've kind of seen him dabble in before, but he does ace this as as well. The biggest surprise of the movie for me, aside from Joel Edgerton, was Robert Pattinson as a French prince. I won't say too much about what that role entails, but he adds a significant amount of levity to the film when it probably needs it most. It's an incredibly interesting character and it's just another thing that confirms for me that he is one of the most versatile and, and vital and exciting actors working today. You wanna to talk about exciting though, let's talk about Adam Arkapoor's photography because God damn, this man has just this genius way of making a film look drab and desaturated and gross and vile, but also absolutely explosive with dynamic 
color. This movie was gorgeous from the second it began and it never ever let up. The way this man plays with light, the way he's able to give every scene so much texture, so much depth, so much detail is absolutely staggering. There's also of course a bunch of incredible vista shots here. Shots of the sky and the moon and the sunset that were absolutely drop dead gorgeous. There were so many moments in this movie that were just like absolutely picturesque, but it's so much about how he gives you so much character insight through light. And a lot of that, of course, comes from the direction of the movie as well, which I found to be absolutely trans- Fixing. This is a story about a young man trying to navigate the world built for him by older men, crueler men, more arrogant men, men filled with greed that are overrun by corruption. And it's about this young man trying to find his way through that to find out who he himself is. And the way that this movie is directed, it's all about exploring those little details in the performances. Who's lying to who? Who's playing games with who? Who can you trust? Who can you believe? Who can you put your faith in? And the movie in its methodical pacing, in its thoughtfulness, really for me, gave me so much to explore and examine within that space. And I also wanna give a shout out to that absolutely wonderful Nicholas Brattel score. It is pretty different to stuff that I've heard him do before to the point that I actually forgot he was doing it and it wasn't until his name popped up in the credits where I went, no, I get that that was him, mainly because it was brilliant. What really struck me about this movie though is the way it examines how hate is grown from ignorance and vanity and fostered by the corrupt and greedy to have influence over people, to have power over them. When someone is filled with hate, when someone is angry, you can control them. And I found that to be outright the most fascinating element of this movie, the way the older characters work to fill the king with so much loathing and resentment that he did not come into office holding. He is a good-willed person. And it's all about how they can inject that into him to influence him. And it's all about the cycle of hatred, about how we're not born with it. We don't have it inherently. Many of us want to see the best in other people. And unfortunately, politics corrupts. And that for me was an absolutely phenomenal statement for a movie like this to make, to really dig into that and explore that. That actually meant the world to me. And that was outright the most exciting part of this movie, more than anything else, more than the performances, more than the beautiful photography, more than the outstanding direction and gorgeous score, was the way that this movie wanted to examine how empathy is corrupted. And for me, that's why this movie's king. So those are my thoughts on The King. Have you seen it yet? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Did you like this video? Well, of course you did. You can subscribe to Breaking Banter down there somewhere as well as my other channel, Loverboy, over there somewhere. You can follow me on Twitter at Loverboy Media. And if you really, 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 really want to help support this channel, you can support on Patreon. Thank you to all of you doing that already. You're the best. Everyone that watches these videos is amazing. And I will see you all in the next one.